Okay, with the segmentation out of the way, uh, you should have an STL file somewhere on your computer. Uh, I moved mine back to the desktop because I realized I exported it into that mess of a folder structure uh, for the actual CT DICOM files. Uh, but once it's out, it should just be floating here. And we're, again, we're going to go into uh, Mesh Mixer to do the post processing. Just double click, and it should open up. There it is, looks pretty good. So as you can see here in the lower right hand corner, we have a 45,000 uh, triangle budget 3D model, which is fairly lightweight. And I don't think I'm going to reduce this any further than it is. Like it's pretty easy to work with. It's not taxing my system in any way. And it's still resulting in a fairly small file. Uh, in fact, the airway in its entirety as it stands is only eight megabytes and that's not bad. Okay, so from here, uh, the first step that I usually do, well, obviously, besides thinking of whether or not I need to reduce a triangle count, is take out all the parts that um, we don't need. And the parts that we don't need are the lung lobes that are up here. So to do this, we're actually just going to go into their select tool. We're going to reduce the size of the uh, cursor. You can also input your value here if you know what it is. So I think I'm going to go with a 20. Zoom in on your model. And the places where you don't want uh, or you want to separate out, select it. So just paint it. Oops, you don't want to do that. Okay, all the way around, making sure that you've gotten all of the areas. Good, and you're going to hit delete. So now those two are completely separate from each other. We're going to do that for all the, uh, the extraneous features that we picked up along the way during segmentation. So again, we're going to go right lower. We're going to separate this out. If you want to be more careful and select a smaller brush size, it's totally okay. Okay, we're going to hit delete. And now with our parts completely separated between what we want and what we don't want, we want to then get rid of these floating segments of lung. The easiest way to do this is to click anywhere in the part of the model that you want to keep. So in this case, I'm clicking on the trachea. You're going to hit E for everything. So, so this is selecting everything you don't want. And then you're going to hit I on your keyboard. I on your keyboard selects the things that are not connected. So now we've got the floating pieces that we don't want. And then you're going to hit delete. Whenever Mesh Mixer throws up, um, let me back out here. Whenever Me Mesh Mixer throws up faces that look pink and have this blue outline, that means it's a non-manifold face. And that means it won't 3D print. Uh, we have to fix that before we do anything else. So in order to do that, you're going to go into Analysis, Inspector. It's going to highlight the damaged regions, and you're just going to hit Repair All. Mesh Mixer is just going to calculate it out and then seal those areas with a brand new face group, hence the different colors. So one up there, and one where's the lower. Oh, I was there a minute ago, but now it's gone. Perfect. Clean. So let's check with what we've got. Trachea, point of bifurcation, or initial bifurcation. We've got the left main stem, right main stem, Right upper, right mid, right lower, left upper, left lower. Good. So from this point, we're going to export this as our main file. So find it, airway. I call it a second name, edited. And we'll hit save. That way, if we make any mistakes in the future, we can just always go back to this file and not have to delete those um, crappy parts that we accidentally left in at the onset of this. OK. Uh, from here, we have to ask the question, what exactly do we want to do with this model? So if you just wanted to use this as a gross uh, anatomical teaching model, it would probably be okay to just print this model out. Uh, you can see all of the main uh, points of anatomy that, uh, for our purposes, that you want to show your residents or medical students. But in the lab, like I said before, uh, we typically use this as a bronchoscopy simulator. So in order to become a bronchoscopy simulator, A, you need it to be hollow, uh, and B, you need to simulate the cartilage. Uh, luckily, both those things kind of go hand in hand. Uh, in order to do that, it's a two-step process. So first we have to uh, expand this thing to encapsulate the actual cartilage surrounding the airway. And then the second step is to hollow the model out so that all you're left with is that cartilage. That way you can actually stick a bronchoscope down and then um, teach the correct psychomotor skills so that you get uh, into the correct airway that you need to. So in order to do that, so step one, we're going to extrude this entire model and create that cartilage. To do that, we're going to go back into our selection menu. We are going to select the entire model. And with the entire model selected, you're going to go into the edit menu, and then you're going to hit extrude. 
extrude is basically just going to expand the entire model um, by a certain set amount. And you can see that set amount here in their offset. And the only things that you have to change are A, the offset amount, and B, the direction. So we can see what happens here. Uh, if we choose the x-axis, it's going to just expand it in the x-axis direction and no other directions. The y-axis corresponds to the y, obviously. And the z also at the z-axis. So you can see it just moving around the screen. We don't want any of those, and we definitely don't want constant. We want normal. So normal expands it everywhere in every single direction. This way we have a uh, homogeneous thickness that's been added uh, to all dimensions. So this is going to act as our pseudo cartilage in this case. Uh, when you're creating the cartilage, uh, you can go with the physiological thickness of it. Um, and it varies from person to person. And you can find out in literature an approximate value that's going to be realistic. But you have to remember that we're also going to be printing this in the future. And 3D printers really struggle with things that are way too small. Uh, and way too thin to actually print out in any sort of um, uh, high definition amount unless you're using something like an SLA or a really high-end uh, printer. So for our lab, unless we're doing this on the uh, Form 2, for example, I usually set the offset to about 2 millimeters, and it's pretty close to the uniform thickness of cartilage anyway, if not, not just a tiny bit thicker. We hit Accept. And as you can see, it's nice and fat and overinflated, or somewhat overinflated. Um, so the next step, now that we have our pseudo cartilage, is to make this entire model hollow so that we can stick our bronchoscope down or our intubation tube. In order to do that, you're going to go into your actual edit menu. And luckily, inside Mesh Mixer, there's a hollow function. So you're going to hit hollow. It's going to calculate it out. And there it is. So the gray outline is uh, your outside. And then the actual interior is going to be the solid gray. And you can check it. Um, this is going to be the, whatever's in solid gray right now is going to be removed from the model. And whatever is in uh, this clear see-through is going to be kept. So right now the offset distance is at two millimeters, uh, which basically means that we're going to be removing our original model. Because we set the original offset for the extrusion at two millimeters. If we then set the offset to two millimeters inside our hollow menu, we're essentially just backtracking away from the uh, ex original extrusion and just removing the original size of the model. This is the ideal scenario um, because the internal negative space is going to be one to one to that of what you pulled out from CT. Uh, if you find that you are uh, missing a couple of branches, like this one's really close to being um, not, not, um, not segmented out or contiguous with the main branch, like it's really thin, if you find that that's the case, you can turn the offset distance down. So if, for example, uh, if I turn it down to one millimeter and then we hit update hollow, you're going to be taking out a lot more from the inside. But as you can see, uh, your different branches are going to be more defined. The problem with this is that suddenly you're not really taking out the, the data that you pulled out of from the original CT. Now, when you're just teaching these techniques, it might be totally OK to have a little bit of um, uh, estimated play in the models that you produce for ease of both printing and um, model creation. But if you're doing something for like pre-surgical planning or in-surgical planning, you want to be as true and as accurate to the patient CT and source data as possible. Um, so again, it depends. Uh, the accuracy really depends on your purpose. And it's something for you, the surgical team, or the educational team to discuss um, how much uh, accuracy is deemed necessary. Like sometimes this will be okay for, for um, educational purposes. But for today, I was pretty happy with the way that the two millimeters look. And also by increasing the offset distance in this, like by increasing it, it's just going to be easier to print later because um, the object is thicker. So the printer won't struggle as much uh, with getting those really tight geometries, which can be a pain. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So at two millimeters, we're going to hit accept. And now it's hollow. You can't tell, so there's two ways you can tell. You can go into the shaders menu and select this one on the far right, and that puts it in a hollow. And as you can see, there are suddenly two walls, one in this gray and one in this purple. Inside the purple is going to be completely hollow, and then inside the gray is where we're going to have um, our actual structure. Uh, the second way you can tell, and the second way that we actually have to make this model, is we're going to do a plane cut right here at the top of the trachea. Uh, the plane cut's going to open up the entire model so that you can actually put things down it which is the ultimate goal. Let's go to plane cut. It's going to open up this two-dimensional plane that extends infinitely in the x and y directions. 
I'm going to move it up to the z-axis, and we're going to just tell it to keep the bottom. And for whatever reason, sometimes my mesh mixer does this, where uh, you can't actually preview the cut, and that's really annoying. Um, but what's important is that this fat arrow is pointing upwards, downwards. <laughs> this fat arrow is pointing downwards because this is actually going to tell us which parts to keep. Except, wow, I was totally wrong. You're going to want to go upwards and then hit accept. So aside from that little screw up, now you can see that your model is hollow. You have completely removed um, a one-to-one -one replica of what you pulled out from CT. And then from this, you can uh, do your bronchoscopies. Uh, you can end the cuts there. Um, what I typically do is I also take the ends of these uh, branches off, if possible. There's no real reason for it, because when you put the bronchoscope down the the airway model, you're going to have a light, so you're going to be able to see in. And realistically, like if we were to try and simulate what actually happens inside a, a patient, um, it's going to be pretty dark in there because obviously it's not going to be exposed to the outside world. So it's perfectly okay for you to just leave these things capped off. But if you were to, if you did want to uh, open these things up for whatever reason, um, one way to do it is to go into your plane cut menu, but instead of just doing uh, the plane cut and then moving it down and things like that, you can just draw on the screen. So left click on your mouse and then drag, click and drag. Uh, and then once you're happy with where you are, I did it again. Once you're happy with where you are, just do that. So now your ends are open. If you have it looking like this though, it's no good. This is non-manifold. So you can hit inspector, prepare, and it should be fine. Uh, but uh, it's just easier if we don't do that. And we find one that's actually manifold, so like this. If if I had the preview available to me in Mesh Mixer, it'd be far easier to actually gauge um, where we are. But sometimes I just put these in like that, and you, and then if you have the ends open, you can uh, design some markers in other three D software, and then you can put the markers in, and the markers can be used as like a a teaching guide, so that when you see that color up in here, um, you know that you're at the right lower uh, bronchus. But I'm just going to leave that in. Uh, so last thing before we slice for 3D printing, or I guess second last thing, we inspect. So we just inspect. Our model is good. Uh, okay, now comes the somewhat tricky bit that is actually rather difficult for me to explain. Um, so when we're printing this model, uh, it's actually really rather difficult because A, it's hollow, and that automatically adds a level of difficulty. And for the printer anyway, and for you as well, set it up uh, geometrically. And B, because of support generation. So if we were to do supports on this right now, as it currently stands like this, the program is going to freak out because these are severe angles that are uh, the roof of this. Let's go in here. Wow, I really screwed up my mesh mixer. It's not doing it anymore. There we go. It's going to read this as a severe overhang, so it's going to put supports inside, or chances are it's going to put a ton of supports inside. We want this completely hollow. Otherwise, when the supports are actually in play, uh, your bronchoscope is going to just hit them, and it's going to be really weird, and it's going to take the. It's going to be a pretty bad simulator if suddenly you've got some support structures on the inside that you haven't taken care of. So it's for that reason that we want supports only on the outside. So to do this, we have to know two things. One where our overhangs are going to be, or where they're going to be determined. And two, how exactly are we going to position this on the bed? And they're going to go hand in hand. So the first thing, uh, we're going to go to analysis, and we're going to analyze where the overhangs currently are. And OK, this is really bugging me. So we're over. OK, it's just clear now that my computer hates me today. Anyway, we're back. I relaunched Mesh Mixer. Um, OK, this is, a, <laughs> this is far better, because these reds are highlighting exactly where the overhangs are going to be. Uh, so where were we? Oh, support generation. Um, we're going to just try and cover as many of these red areas as we can with manual supports so that we don't get supports on the inside that are otherwise impossible to clean. To generate manual supports in Mesh Mixer, go into your overhangs menu. So analysis, overhangs, they will glow red. And what you're going to do is that for every single red spot, you're going to double click like that, or single click, sorry. And you're going to go through every single one of these and try and generate these uh, as best as you can. Increase the coverage as best as you can. It's really finicky sometimes, so just you can also drag. The idea here is that we get um, good coverage. 
of our model such that it will actually print properly. My middle mouse button is sticking a little, that's okay. Let me do. Uh, if uh, you can't generate supports in one direction, rotate your model and then try it again. Again, this, this process is somewhat finicky. But we found that this is the best way to do it. This can take some time. Uh, without a doubt, you will have to sacrifice uh, some parts of your model that just won't listen to the support generation. Like this guy. And this guy. Come on. I can tell you right now that with the amount of supports we currently have, I have severe doubts that this would print properly. Come on. You can go into your support generation and um, decrease some of these values. It gets really tricky to decrease these values though um, if you're especially printing with NinjaFlex. It's not going to be happy with too tight tolerances, but sometimes um, if you just generate enough supports, uh, it's okay. Like that. So just minimize it or make your supports a little bit skinnier and then just hope that it works. And that does not sound great, but honestly, this is, um, this is about par for the course when it comes to printing. Hope for the best. Lots of supports. You're going to want to overkill on this. Still worried about that bifurcation. This might not work. Anyway, I've gotten coverage pretty much everywhere. Uh, I would be comfortable enough to throw this onto the printer and then just see what happens. Uh, if it fails, note down any spots that um, are noticeably lacking in quality and then try and add supports there. Uh, the other way that you can do this is also decrease your max angle. Like that. And then hopefully you can then rerun your uh, analysis, and then uh, you can add more supports as needed. I honestly think that this is the best that we can do so far, unless I sit here for far too long. Okay, so if uh, if you deem this opaque, okay, it looks like a mess, and it is a mess. Uh, one of the questions that I get a lot with this is, why do I print this vertically? Why don't I just tip this thing? Uh, along the y-axis or x-axis so that you print it uh, more horizontally and have fewer vertical layers. And the answer to that is it doesn't look as good. I generally try and print vertically. Whoa, that is sketchy. Oh well. So now once we're happy, we export this out. And, and then we prep for print.